Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Father, we love you, but not as much as you love us, as you gave your only begotten Son to be the way to eternal life. Other than that, we are not worthy to come to you. And so, with this video today, I pray as a way to edify out of love and for clarity that your will may be done, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Is one saved, always saved, biblical? The Word of God says in Romans 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For there it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. Notice how the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation, for anyone who believeth, whether you are a Jew or a non-Jew, underlined with the word Greek. First of all, we have to understand that salvation has nothing to do with what you do. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9, the word of God says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. So there is nothing that you do in order to obtain salvation, but by faith. And it goes on to say in verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the word of God is clear. Salvation is obtained by his grace, his gift, not us to earn to work for. Romans 11 verse 29, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Once again, the word of God is clear. The gifts of God are without repentance. Salvation is a gift, a gift of God that is without repentance. The word repentance means change of mind. And in this context, God does not change his mind on the gift of salvation. Once you are saved, you are always saved because it has nothing to do with what you do. It is the gift of God. Now, the moment that you're saved, God comes into your life. That is God the Spirit or the Holy Spirit. And it is God who will work in you the moment that you are saved. Philippians 1 verse 6, the word of God says this, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Once saved, the most high God works in that saved person and that person will be a new creature who he will be working in in until he passes away and goes to heaven. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So salvation is a gift from God that is obtained by his grace through faith. Nothing that you can do because it's not of works, lest any man should boast. You will receive the Holy Spirit the moment that you believe it is the Holy Spirit or God the Spirit who starts a work in you and therefore you are a new creature. Paul says the Galatians are severed from Christ. Now if you think about that brother, what does that imply? That implies that the Galatians, the Christians in Galatia, were once in Christ. And what does it mean to be in Christ? That means to be saved. You're a saved individual if you're in Christ as a member of his mystical body with grace dwelling within your soul. But Paul says that they're severed from Christ. So they once were in Christ and thereby saved, but now because they're going back to the old law and trying to be justified by it, they're no longer in Christ and thereby no longer saved. So that gift, that initial gift of grace, which puts them in a saving relationship with Jesus is now forfeited. One saved is always saved. Is that true, sir? No. Biblically, historically, the Bible and the churches of the apostles taught that if you refuse to remain united to Christ and you refuse to submit to the spirit and choose to walk away or do a sin that is heinous and vile and do it 
knowingly you can be cut off from Christ. So neither the Bible nor the early church taught if you trust in Christ, you are saved forever. Then on our best and most holy day, we are still saved by grace. And it is God's keeping power that sustains us. I rest in that 100%. At the same time, I know that God does not force us to stay in his house or force us to stay in his family and that we can still choose to deny him or walk away from him as believers. You say, well, that scares me. Why should it scare you? If you want to follow the Lord, he's promised to keep you. You've got nothing to worry about. On the flip side, if you say, well, I'm going to pursue my own agenda. I'm going to leave my wife. I'm going to take off with this other lady. I'm going to do what I want to do. Who cares about God? And you live and die like that, then you have denied the Lord by your very actions. And Jesus makes clear that it's not just those who say, Lord, Lord, but those who do his will, who enter his Father's heavenly kingdom. Don't allow yourself to be fooled by men who may have a heart of Christ, who may be academically schooled, who may have more knowledge than you in the Greek or the Hebrew, that doesn't mean that they interpret Scripture correctly. The Word of God says this in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 to 21, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So when it comes to the topic, once saved, always saved, I always encourage you to ask yourself, what does God's word say? Not what does my pastor say? Not what does a so-called academic say? Not what a so-called YouTube content creator says? No, what does God's word say? The moment somebody adds in his own, own interpretation of what the biblical understanding is of any topic. In this case, once saved, always saved, you are on dangerous territory. As Romans chapter 3 verse 4 says, God forbid, yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. When it comes to essential matters, such as where you will spend your life eternally, it is important to understand that you go by what the Word of God says and not what man says. The way you get saved is to put your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, His death, burial, and resurrection. Faith alone, plus nothing, minus nothing. There's much, 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 much more evidence for once saved, always saved, to be completely 100% biblical. But in this video, I just wanted to touch on the simple fact that salvation has nothing to do with what you do, not your works, not what you can earn. No, salvation is a gift that God gives you for free by just believing on His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Death, burial, and resurrection. Secondly, God's gifts are without repentance. And salvation is a gift that is without repentance, meaning God will not change his mind once he has given you the gift of eternal life, as Romans 11 verse 29 says. And number three, as per Philippians 1, 6, God, the Spirit, or the Holy Spirit, will continue to do the work until you pass away and go to heaven, which is also known as the day of Jesus Christ. And that means that the moment you are saved, you are a new creature because 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The moment that you believe in Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, you have become a new creature. The Word of God is clear on all questions. It's just that you have to humble yourself and be led by the Holy Spirit. And if you're not saved, you have to be saved first in order for you to grow in biblical truth. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of eternal life. Thank you for being such a gracious, loving God. And to remind ourselves not to lean on men, that any man be a liar, but your word to be true, because you cannot lie. I pray that this video 
was a blessing to anyone who listens. And if that person hasn't decided yet to be saved, I pray that you will guide him or her with the spirit of truth, your Holy Spirit, to salvation, which is your gift to give and not ours to earn. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.